dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. We have two sons aged eight and five. They're the most wonderful people and my life is richer because of them. The reason I start this post on how parenthood affects work with such a statement is that I'm certain some of what follows will come across as overly negative. But having had all my experiences as a father, my only regret comes from the desire to spend as much of my life as I can with my children. I wish we had decided to have them sooner. Having children is a sacrifice when working within UK academia. This is not a secret. A friend of mine was upset after attending a session for female academics in which the professor's advice for researchers with children was to get an au pair. That same professor's reaction after learning about my second child was to say, I don't even know how this is possible, and I assume the comment was not about the biology. Most will understand the problem, as is increasingly true across professions. When office hours end at a research institution, there's nothing that keeps us from continuing working. Research is greedy since there's always the next question, the next level of scrutiny. And importantly, our environment appears to reward maximum work hours because of the international competition for publications and projects and the mainstream academic culture that does little to promote work-life balance. It is very common to work in the evenings, at the weekend, and perplexingly during strikes. Having children therefore means that the pressure is high to get the most out of 9 to 5 or something equivalent. My problem when adapting to becoming a parent was that before that, there was very little pressure to stick to a strict work schedule. The freedom to self-organize work hours makes academia very attractive until one has a family, and so the learning curve was rather steep for me. If you consider having children and this description resonates with you, my advice is to practice more efficient time management early. The other challenge comes from the loss of brain space for work. In academia, there must be time for thoughts to roam freely, and I love it when they do, while traveling or in the supermarket, uh, under the shower. But children occupy a lot of thought, so thinking too must become more structured. For context, I need to state that I may have a more severe case of parenthood, um, because our oldest has special needs. Uh, as dementia researchers, we want society to understand what it means to care for a person with dementia. I want everyone to understand what it means to have an autistic child. I became an expert in autism to the point that I printed out research reports to hand over to the school's special educational needs coordinator. We watch and discuss our son's energy levels, mood, stimulation, and social interactions in a way parents of neurotypicals find difficult to understand. As for the UK, neither my wife nor I are British. To me, the UK, and London in particular, displays these confusing push-pull forces which, on one hand, attract with uh, world-leading research institutions, a diverse culture, and the wonderful gift of allowing our children to grow up bilingually, while, on the other hand, repel with a high cost of living, outrageous cost of childcare, comparably poor parental leave policies, and a deteriorating healthcare system. The current political and economic climate is one where support is taken, not given, but I continue to hope that we can improve as a society. I want to dedicate this post to my children and friends, Ayanis and Yuri, who I love more than myself. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.